PowerPoint just got the amazing ability to insert a Power BI page. And it works with slices, cross highlighting. So click on there and then click on there. And then you can see it affected in the other visuals. It works with drill up and drill down. So I can drill down into here or I can use these to drill back up. It works with report page tooltips. So you can hover over these visuals and get a breakdown of that. And even works with drill through. So I can right click on this one and drill through to this page. And then it opens up this other page, go back to my original page like that and drill through into this one. So pretty much all the stuff you would expect it to do, it does pretty well. By the way, my name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Excel, Google Sheets. If you're using text at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. So let's go through how to do it. If you have the newest version of Microsoft Office, then in the Insert tab, you will see Power BI. And it's super easy, but this doesn't apply for everyone that has this version. I'll explain more about that later on in this video. So you just insert that and all you need to do is paste the report page URL here. So if I go to Power BI, I'm going to copy this URL and then I'm going to paste it here and then press insert. By the way, another new thing that has come out for Office Insiders as well as this Cameo feature. So you'll be able to see me as well. Hello. <laughs> so you can actually insert this. Usually it comes off, off by default, but then you can see it like that and you have this camera tool here. All of these are the same, but in your preview, you can choose which camera to present from. So that's pretty good, but I'm actually going to delete it. So here I am in the Power BI that I've just put in, and as you can see, it's working there. And this is pretty much it. Now, if you are cross highlighting or selecting different things and you just wanna go back, you can click here and choose to restore view. Then it will ask you, do you want to restore? Just press yes, and then it goes back to how it was. You can also refresh and get the latest data from Power BI if you are refreshing it. Note that this is grayed out now. I haven't refreshed this in a while because this is just static data that I created for a demo. Add in options so you can clear view or learn. So learn will open up Power BI's learning site. Clear view will go back to this. Now, the one thing about it is that there is no way that I could work out how to navigate between pages. So in, in this case, you can insert your own page navigator, which is a new kind of button that's just been released a few months ago in Power BI. So I'll show you how to do that because I think that's kind of important to be able to give you the full flexibility with it. However, what I will say is that when you are presenting something, then try and keep it minimal because you are presenting this to uh, some people using slides and your speech. And the slides should only have enough visuals that allow you to prove your point. Otherwise it can get to being a bit too heavy for the people to understand. Uh, for example, here I have three visuals and they are complex tables, but I've actually removed the numbers and just done the heat mapping. So we can see that I can figure out what the red is like that and click to filter what the red item is and see what the red of the red is. So this is a really, really good way to do it, but just make sure you simplify it when you're doing narration together with slides. Um, also, if you right click, you get include, exclude. You can copy things if it is from a table. These image charts are using a table. I have a hack that I use to do this. I have another video that I'll link to which explains how to do that as well. Um, and you can also do your sort options on certain visuals here. So you can sort axis or you can sort legend if there is a legend that's applicable as well. If I go back to this one, you can get pretty much most kind of visuals to work. Even custom visuals like this are working okay. Um, I'm going to reset to go back. You can minimize or maximize that toolbar. So if I restore view, it does take me to the first one because I don't have this page navigator. So you also have the ability to uh, have custom visuals, as you can see very clearly from here. And they do work with filters, as you might expect. 
This is one of my favorites. This is the table sorter, which allows you to sort by different columns. Great for having lots of measures across a dimension. This is the, uh, <laughs> the Enlightened Aquarium visual, which is silly, but kind of fun and nice to have. And then this is the chiclet slicer as well. So uh, you can also have map charts as well, as you might expect. Uh, you also have the ability to do insights. So this is a brand new feature that often doesn't work. You can expand or collapse it like that as well. So here I have another dashboard and you'll notice that the filters pane is there. So you can use your filters as you might expect, which is quite cool. Or clear filters that way. Uh, the other thing you have on the top right is this button here. And this allows you to do certain things that you might want to do. For example, it's a bit counterintuitive, but if you click the delete button on your keyboard, it doesn't go away. Um, however, if you click on this, you can delete it that way. You also can get support, um, well, select the object, but you can do that usually. And then show a saved image. Honestly, I don't recommend this. This just kind of converts it to an image. So if I, for example, duplicate the slide and this one, I show a saved image. It's now an image. I can't do anything with it. And it has all this ugly stuff around it that's not a clickable hyperlink. So it's kind of a bit useless. If you really want it as an image, what I would do is just screenshot it um, or just crop it once you get here. Uh, Windows Shift S is the shortcut I always use to take screenshots because you can draw around whatever you need to. So this is much better if you really want it as a saved image. The blog here, tell a story with data announcing the all new Power BI integration for PowerPoint, does talk about versions. And it says that it's only available by default in the Office beta channel, um, but uh, it will roll out for everyone else soon if you're Office 365. But it says even if you don't see it, you can get the add-in directly from the Office add-in store and start using it today. So let me show you how to do that in case you don't have this version appearing here. So in PowerPoint, if you don't see in the Insert tab, you can go to Insert and then get add-ins and then you can search for Power BI. And then not Power BI tiles, that's been around for a while, it's not official Microsoft, but this one is. So you click on that and then you can click add, and then it will show up there. Once you have added it, then if you go to my add-ins, you should see it over here along with anything else that you have on. Forms is another one that Microsoft have put in by default. Um, these other ones are ones that I <laughs> put in myself, including this Power BI tiles that I had never used before though. Another important thing from this blog is when you share the presentation, they'll need an active Power BI account and access to the report. So you need to do the standard share settings within Power BI, otherwise they won't be able to see it. And it says here, um, well, unless you've frozen the view as an image or taken a screenshot, or of course, if you're actually presenting it in a room and they happen to be in the room, then they can see what's on your screen, of course. PowerPoint treats it like a shape. So if you click on it, you can go to shape format. A lot of these are grayed out. You can give it alt text to allow it to have a description for people with screen readers. So you can type in something there as you wish. Uh, most of the things here are grayed out, but if I do, for example, show add in a shape like this, then you would get these items appearing here of bring forward or send backwards, like you would expect with PowerPoint shape. Another thing which you might find useful, but you have to click it right on the edge is the ability to right click it and choose lock. And that way you cannot select it and move it around. This is really good if you want to insert other objects around it and work with those objects at the same time. Icons are really good. Um, I love using icons, especially when you're doing this kind of PowerPoint presentation. So I can give, for example, these icons. You can move them around and then you can go to graphics format and you can recolor them to anything you want. So you can choose the eyedropper and bring that exact color from there. Something that you can't do with Power BI annoyingly. <laughs> right, so let's go into Power BI Online and show you a couple of things as well. So here I'm in Power BI Online. Now, I am in the edit view, which is why I see all of these things. Um, I do recommend having a page navigator. So in the buttons drop down, you can choose navigator and choose page navigator. And then it will create it really nicely for you. Uh, one thing is go to pages and take off 
show hidden pages. You don't want to see the hidden pages there. And then you can just drag it down, resize it. Perfect there. And then it doesn't update, which I found even if you go file and then save, it doesn't update. But after you've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And from here, I'm going to clear view and then start again. And here's my page navigator, perfect. But what I will say is you want to have your page navigator pretty much in every page, otherwise it's kind of a bit useless. Maybe they will put in a way to navigate the pages soon, but for now I couldn't find it. If you go to a page without a page navigator, you can click here and choose restore view and reset. Note that in some views you might see reset directly here instead. Um, that's also useful if you want to go back to the original page and you navigate it away from that page. And if you have a filters pane, then you would see this, the filters pane that you can show or hide that way. So here is the uh, release notes blog that I'll link to in the description below. It does say that if you start from Power BI, you can click export PowerPoint embed live data, um, and then you get this dialog. I do not see that in my version. Um, in my version, if I click export PowerPoint, then I just get this, which has appeared for a long time and I can click export. So eventually it will say your PowerPoint is ready to download and then it does download. So it does export it and you can say just the page that you selected. It doesn't allow you to do anything with it. So if you do double click it when you're in slideshow mode, then it just opens up the Power BI website for you. Now I have also embedded this in a web page. So this is our web page, Excel Consulting Asia, and it does work pretty much the same way. So you can navigate to it, but in this one, you have the page navigator by clicking on there, which you don't have in the other one. You have pretty much the same right click options, um, except you have a little bit less. You don't have the insights that I showed you earlier. And you also don't have the sorting options and the drop down options. So you have more in PowerPoint than you have in the embedded version on a website, but you don't have as much as you do in the online version. So it is still exporting to PowerPoint. That takes a while. It just downloads the file. But if I right click and I choose um, on the service, then I can choose analyze and you can do different things like find where this distribution is different. That's not currently showing in the PowerPoint one. And lastly, if you do go to slideshow mode, it does work as expected. So you can click on things and it does work. So if you like this video, then my name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Teams, Zoom. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel and I make weekly videos. So subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.